there are some cars that have a personality that is specific to music. This car is heavy metal and punk rock, and I don't care what anybody says. Howdy folks, Nathan here on an awesome day. Why? Because I'm driving the 2019 Ford Mustang Bullet. It is a special edition of the Ford Mustang, and in my mind, it's not only an awesome Mustang, but it's the best Mustang you can buy. I'm not just talking about better than the GT, I'm saying it's better than the Shelby's. And coming up, I'm gonna tell you all about the vehicle, its heritage, and why I think it's the best Mustang. you're asking, well wait a minute, why is it really called the Bullet? Notice there's no big Mustang out there on the grill? Well that was done on purpose, to look like the car from the movie. For those of you who don't know about the movie Bullet, which is a 1968 Steve McQueen movie that took place in San Francisco. It has an amazing chase scene and the vehicle that Steve McQueen drove, a 1968 Mustang. That's why this vehicle exists, to pay homage to that one. That black grill the chrome surround, yeah, right from the movie, or very similar from the movie. And that also goes to those 19 inch wheels. It only comes with those 19 inch wheels, the black ones. That's because they look like the ones used in the car from the 1968 movie. And it goes all the way to the back. Everything about the car's design echoes the look of that car. Now, let's say you really don't want green. You can get one other color, black, but that's it. If you're getting the bullet, Two colors, that's it. That's all you can choose from. Ladies and gentlemen, El Coyote. That's right, that's the Coyote V8. Now normally with the GT, you get 460 horsepower out of the Coyote, which is great. But this breathes better. And because of that, with everything else we put in here, 480 horsepower and 420 pound-feet of torque. That's really good. You know what else is good? It comes standard and only with a six-speed manual transmission, one that is sweet shifting and it has a cue ball on it. By the way, another thing that makes this awesome, Highway MPG 25, which is pretty damn good. Yes, it's a sports car, so you gotta get down to get in it, and I'm a big guy but it's not too bad. So what makes this interior unique to the Bullet? Well, here's a few things. First of all, let's start it up, shall we? It's 90 degrees outside, so why roast? Ooh, ooh, wait a minute. This is a normal mode. Ah! I could do that all day long. And Ford figured that, which is why they had this amazing sounding exhaust system. It's not augmented. It's just a really good exhaust system. We'll get to that in a minute. But let's talk about what's inside this vehicle. You can get, for a pretty penny, Recaro seats. Now I've sat in the version that has Recaro seats, and for a big guy, I didn't find them very comfortable. They're very tight. If you get the regular seats, you are also able to get three function memory, which not only gives you seat memory, but also mirror memory and ambient lighting memory. Now, Ford Sync in the past, well, I used to say sync stinks, but I've taken that back over the past few years, especially with this newest system. If you look at the system that's inside this car, it's the Sync 3. It is one of the more intuitive systems out there. It's extremely easy to use. The graphics aren't the best. This is an eight inch screen. Kind of wish it was like a nine or 10 inch screen, but you do get Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Look on down here. This is the mode switch. Now, what's really unusual is, don't you think you would be able to push down to make things trigger? None of these do that. You have to lift up to make these things work. The different modes that exist are normal. My mode, which is configurable, you can play with that to make it work the way you want it to work all the time. Then there's sport plus, and then track, and drag strip. 
One of the main things you'll notice that changes is your tachometer. Each one of those is supposed to give you a little bit more information that you need that's relevant to what you're doing. Finally, there is the actual feeling of the car. Things change because you can get the Magnaride suspension system. And if you add that to everything that's available here as you configure the vehicle, everything changes when you go through the modes. Once you start going into track mode, everything changes. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, let's just have a little listen, shall we? <laughs> Hold on cameraman. Our good old Stig, that's right, he was the Stig at one point in time, he knows how to wring serious performance out of this car. It shows you that going from a big ham-fisted oaf like me to a proper little tiny race car driver like Paul, this car works for both. Another reason why I think it's one of the best Mustangs ever made. Despite the fact this thing sounds like a million bucks. <laughs> despite the fact that you can drive it on the track like a lunatic, despite the fact that it looks fantastic, especially if you're a Steve McQueen fan, it is a vehicle you can drive every day. It's comfortable. If you put it in a normal mode, it has a nice settled ride that's the equivalent of, I think, a BMW M3. And remember, this now has an independent rear suspension. Old Mustangs didn't have that. Everything combined makes this such a pleasure to drive. There is a caveat. See, it does have a back seat, and, well, let me show you. All right, so here's the painful part. Not only do you get to watch the fat guy get in the back, but you have to watch him figure out how to do it. Now, first of all, there's a clasp here that holds the seatbelt, so it goes over your shoulder that's in place, and it's magnetic, so you have to undo that. Then, the center handle here, you have to move that forward. Then, ah, so how's your guy stayed going? That's pretty good. It's a nice day, about 90 degrees. I was actually able to talk about the weather and it's still not all the way up. Now, if you have the Recaro seats, it's manual. You just lift up the forward lever and slide it forward. Boom, it's much faster. Okay, so that's all the way forward. That's tilted all the way forward. Here I go. Now, this car was never built to be a comfortable four passenger vehicle. Now, I did put my 10 year old in the back of this. Any fit, sort of but he couldn't sit back very far. I'm 6'1", I have a tall torso, and there is no human possible way for me to, wait a minute, let's try, it ain't gonna happen. So, if <laughs> someone really short sat in front of me, I might be able to fit for a few minutes riding like this. Otherwise, yeah, it's not happening. All right. The car's a little obnoxious and so am I, so it all works out. This is not a car you buy if you want to be quiet anyway, right? But all in all, in terms of its overall ride, it's pretty good. So let's talk about a few of the options available. Now there is the $2,100 bullet electric package. If you want Magna Ride, that's $1,695. And those Recaro seats I was talking about, $1,595. Competitors, well, it's definitely the Dodge Challenger RT Scat Pack 392 and the Camaro SS, both of which you can get for less, but if you option them similar to this vehicle, yeah, they'll be around the same price. Let's wrap this up with saying a couple things about this vehicle that I think are very important for you guys to know. Now, first of all, it weighs 3,900 pounds approximately, so basically two tons. If you look at the power to weight ratio, that's still really, really good, which is why this car handles so damn well on a track and has so much power coming out of a corner. It's incredible. The other thing is it's starting price for the bullet package, 47,690. Now as equipped, and we have almost everything you can get with the exception of the Recaro seats, we're talking about a vehicle that suddenly costs $49,790. Is it worth the money? I mean, we're getting up there in terms of price, right? Nearly 50, and probably after everything's said and done, it's gonna be about 50 grand. 
I think it's worth every damn penny. It is the best Mustang I've ever driven. And I've driven Shelby's, I've driven GT's, I've driven all sorts. As a matter of fact, when I was a kid, I had a 1965 Mustang. It's the truth. I mean, I ruined the damn car. I raced it after I took the six cylinder out and put an eight cylinder in and uh, it's a long story. But the point is, I love Mustangs and I haven't found one as endearing as the Bullet ever. It is my favorite Mustang and I think it might be yours too. I definitely recommend a test drive. Thanks for joining me for the Fastlane Car. This is Nathan. I'll see you next time.